Alright, in today's video we're going to be checking out this K&N Performance Air Filter. Uh, this is a completely stock uh, 2013 Cadillac Escalade. It does have a 6.2 liter engine and a 6 speed automatic transmission. Completely stock, nothing done to this. Um, we're going to do a little bit of, I guess you can say myth busting, because I'm going to be using a tuning software to data log some important information to test before and after, such as 0 to 60 acceleration and also estimated uh, horsepower this is putting down to the wheel. Um, now, it's not an exact accurate number, but it's a really good tool. It's a good tool to use as a before and after comparison to see what we picked up, what we lost, the percentages up and down. Even if that number is inaccurate, like I've said in my other videos, it's a great tool to measure before and after. Let's see what this thing is trying to sell us here. Designed to increase horsepower up to 50% more airflow, washable and reusable, up to $250 savings, up to 75,000 miles between cleanings a nice thing about this just doing a drop-in filter is a lot of your aftermarket colder intakes they're not even really colder intakes uh, like this factory system for example it looks a little complicated and uh, unnecessary which it is a lot is a lot of this is for noise dampening but this tube goes through this air box and this air box draws air through the fender so you can't really get much more of a colder intake than that than um, having a completely sealed off air box and drawing air from your fender as you can see here there's a foam uh, grommet almost right there uh, so yeah if you're dropping in a, a filter you still keep that true cold air intake system functioning now they do sell like aftermarket intake tubes that still utilize your your factory air box and that might be what I actually do so what's going on exactly why does this add power well this media that this is made out of it's supposed to be like this really porous cotton material that just flows really well as opposed to your typical filters which are made out of like a paper um, so yeah you have more airflow your mass air is gonna account for that it's gonna add more fueling to make up for the extra airflow so you got more air you got more fuel that means more power um, and a lot of the times more power more air more fuel that doesn't necessarily mean worse fuel mileage because you got to consider that that's less the engine is trying to work to maintain a certain speed or to accelerate so to a certain extent if you can have the engine work, working more efficiently uh, more powerful more uh, consistent things of that nature you can actually get better economy if you're keeping your foot out of the pedal that is anyways let's get some uh, some real data on the road we're going to do zero to 60 uh we're going to calculate the time it takes to go zero to 60 and i'm also, also going to cut out a 40 to 60 um and also measure the power differences before and after so let's go ahead and hit the road get some data do some myth busting does this filter even do anything at all all right guys and the uh, tool we're using to collect data is hp tutors it is a tuning software and it's going to give me some really accurate uh, zero to 60 time uh, down to like the milliseconds uh, it's going to give me some estimated horsepower readings and torque readings this is what we're going to be using to measure before and after so right now we're going to go out and get a uh, baseline with this stock air filter before we swap it out for the k &N. let's go all right guys here we go baseline test number one stock air filter zero to 60 let's go So this is the uh, data I've collected for this first uh, baseline test with the stock air filter. And excuse my voice, I'm dealing with a cold, um, I'm still not 100% over it yet, but I'm getting there. Anyways, I can measure from the exact instant, it records one mile an hour, and it measures down to hundreds of a second, maybe even a thousandth of a second. So as I click play, this um, basically plays back the recorded data and I can go down here and measure the exact time it took to hit that 0 to 60 mark and so I'm going to do 0 to 60 and I'm going to take out of that chunk the 40 to 60 as well to measure the full acceleration 0 to 60 and then also measure like the 40 to 60 would be like the, the higher end maybe the second gear 
Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and get these numbers uh, off camera and write down these before measurements. It's a lot thinner than the uh, paper filter that I pulled out of this thing. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, there it is, man. Canon filter. It's supposed to be made out of cotton instead of paper. It's supposed to flow a lot better and add power and efficiency. Let's slap this thing in here and get some after results because the numbers don't lie. I don't know if it means anything, but you can hear the air sucking in through that filter. I think that deserves an underhood shot. So here's some before data. Uh, this was uh, basically peak power uh, was at 5665 RPM. Uh, we're looking at 338 horsepower, 314 foot pounds of torque. Map reading 96.5. Remember, I said the lower that number is from 100, the more restriction there is. Ideally, the the best case scenario would be a, a KPA reading of 100 if there was no restriction at all. So let's try to remember these numbers. I'll probably um, add that to this video as a before and add an after like a little charts so 314 338 96 kpa real quick i'm going to load up the after pull if you want to call it that with the uh, k&n filter let's bring it up here and i gotta come over to the pool and find the peak horsepower it's 50 let's see Oh, the peak was, yeah, about 56.38. Okay, so let's see here. Peak power, 346. Peak torque, 323. Uh, map sensor reading 96.9. It is higher. 97.6. Hmm kind of finicky that map sensor reading as you go higher it's 97 97.8 it's kind of it's got some fluctu fluctuation but anyways let's go back to that peak uh yeah three 346.8 horsepower 323 torque about the same rpm 5600 and really i bet you if i extended these shift points because that's basically where it, where it shifts at it's already commanding the shift in the second gear at this point if i raise those shift points to 6000 rpm i bet you would just keep on making power out to redline uh, basically it's making more and more power up until it shifts uh, this is factory settings factory tune this escalator has not been tampered with so um yeah it's it's pretty um restricted to say the least 
so yeah, let's go ahead. I'm excited to get inside and put these numbers down, compare them side by side, and see the overall results, especially the times. Um, real quick, I don't even remember what the, what the before times, honestly, but I was doing the math on my phone, on my trusty calculator here, and uh, 0 to 60 was 7.445. 40 to 60 was 3.186 so I'm gonna have to get inside and go through this video when I'm editing it I'm editing the video and put them side by side to see uh, the comparison to see if there's uh, an increase or decrease in 0 to 60 times I thought it'd be funny to show you that during these testings of my 0 to 60, you know, acceleration, blah, blah, blah. Um, we just went to Sam's and uh, we've got a cargo area full of snacks, drinks, pasta sauce. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this thing's loaded down. I've got car seats in here. This is the family ride after all. Um, but yeah, 7 seconds 0 to 60. I don't think that's too bad for a SUV full of groceries.